Hello guys, today is the 18th of January and welcome to the start of my new reading vlog. So I just finished recording the anti-TBR tag for you guys and we're actually planning on walking to the Americana which is like a 10-15 minute walk from where we live because there's a huge Barnes & Noble there and my boyfriend is so sweet He actually offered to buy me a book and obviously I will never say no to a free book So we're gonna go do that take Archie with us because it's a nice sunny and beautiful day And then later I'm gonna share with you guys what book I'm gonna start this week off with It's uh, not my usual pick but it was requested by a friend So I waited until the weekend was over to start the book so I can share my experience with you guys because I don't know how it's gonna go But anyway Let's go. Okay guys, so we are back home and we've already had lunch and everything and I have changed into yet another oversized black tee. I hope you guys don't get sick of it because that's literally all I wear. So I thought I would show you guys what I got at Barnes & Noble. I was actually originally only gonna get one book, but my boyfriend said that since we were gonna pick up this book, I might as well get the second one as well. So he was super sweet and kind enough to get me both of them. And I decided to get We Hunt the Flame and We Free the Stars. Now I've heard really good things about this book series. These books are just so gorgeous. I definitely am gonna make it a priority to read them. They're a lot thicker actually than I thought they were gonna be. I didn't realize that both of the books were this huge, but you know, I've never shied away from long books. So I'm really excited to get into these. And now, <laughs> So I mentioned earlier that um, there's a book that I'm gonna start this week off by reading. And it's a book that I heard of, but I was never curious about reading or anything until um, this past weekend, I was talking to my friend Luke and I was telling him how much I loved From Blood and Ash. And he was telling me about the book series that he's currently reading for his book club. And it's the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, like the romance book series. From what I know about the book series, it's just like, it's kind of your very typical romance book where it's romance without a real plot. And there's nothing wrong with that. I enjoy it myself from time to time, but I, I definitely wouldn't have reached for this book um, on my own otherwise. But now I am definitely curious to see what it's all about. So we're gonna do that. Um, I haven't read an ebook in like years. I can't even remember the last one. It must be at least five years. And it's not like I have anything against ebooks. I just like physically reading. Like I like the feeling of actual books. I don't know how long the books are or anything, but I'm gonna start off with the first book, which is Pestilence. And then we'll go from there. If it's interesting enough, Maybe I will read the other books in the series, but no guarantees right now because I don't know what to expect at all. Hello friends, so it's been a few days since I've updated you guys and that's mainly because nothing interesting has been happening. Um, I said in my last update that I had been reading the first book in the Horseman series by Laura Thalassa and I ended up actually reading the rest of the books in the series um, over the last few days. Okay, okay. He wants to say hi. Okay. Nope, don't like me. So I basically just worked on, you know, video stuff and read those three books over the last few days. So pretty uneventful, but I do have a lot of thoughts about those books. It's funny because last night my friend Luke and I, the one that recommended the book series to me, uh, we were just like chatting about it literally for like 
hours because there was so much to dissect with that series and it was just hilarious. We had some really good laughs about it. But yeah, overall, I ended up enjoying the stories a little bit more than I expected. I didn't give any of them like high ratings or anything because they're not like well written books. But I think you definitely have to go into these kind of books and not expecting the writing to be anything spectacular. Now something that I did realize while reading these books is that the author used the exact same formula to write all three of these books. So the female main character, the male love interest, the drama that happens and everything that follows is basically the exact same thing that happens in every single book. So reading that part definitely got a little bit tedious because who really wants to read three books in a row where everything is essentially the same thing with slight variances. But the story was interesting and I don't think that the story is meant to be the main draw for these kind of books because they are like romance books. But I found myself being more interested with the world that they were living in, this like apocalyptic world that they were set in. Because in the first book in Pestilence, the book starts when it's been three years after the horsemen first arrive on Earth and then it's just Pestilence. And then the second book, I think it's like 10, 13 years in. And then the last book that I read, Famine, was 26 years in. So there's been a lot of time progressing in between each of these books. And so that actually made it a little bit more interesting for me. And the last book left on such a huge cliffhanger and it made me really, really curious for the fourth book, which unfortunately isn't coming out until fall of this year or something, I think. So moving on from that, um, I wasn't originally planning on recording today or reading today because I kind of felt like I had ingested so much with the last three days of reading those books continuously that I was like, okay, I need like a little bit of a breather. But I sat at my desk this morning staring at my computer screen and trying to think of games that I actually want to play because I do love playing computer games as well. And nothing sounded interesting to me. So I literally was like, Fine. I will record and I will read. What else am I doing? I decided that I would read The Winter Duke by Claire Eliza Bartlett. Um, this is a library book that was randomly recommended to me so I didn't know too much about it until earlier I looked it up on Goodreads and I saw that this book actually has LGBTQ rep which I was like okay that definitely makes me more curious about it because the story itself sounded interesting enough that I kept it as an option to read, but I didn't realize that there was actually anything that different about it. It kind of just sounded like a very standard fantasy story. So I was like, sure, I'll consider it. But after hearing that there's LGBTQ rep in this, I was like, that makes it a lot more interesting. So I'm absolutely gonna give it a try. There haven't been a ton of great ratings for this from what I've seen. One of the top reviews was about a person who DNF'd it. So that's not super promising, but I'll definitely give it a try and we'll see. Okay, so I've gotten a few chapters into this book and I am not loving it so far. I was pretty curious in the beginning. It started off okay, but I'm literally on page 55 and I'm just now realizing how much political drama is going to be in this book. I guess I should have realized it from the little insert that tells you what the story's about, but I just didn't think it was going to be all political drama and that's what it seems to be so i'm not super interested in the story right now i'm not really invested i'm gonna go walk archie come back and give it another try and we'll see how it goes but right now there's nothing really drawing me into the story it's a little bit boring and i'm just not the biggest fan of like political drama so we'll see okay i'm at just about 200 pages in so i'm like halfway through this book and I'm not enjoying it any better. If there's one word that I can use to describe this book, it would be hostile. This main character, she's been forced into a situation where she has to take up a position that she's not ready for, she's never been prepared for, and she doesn't even want, and everyone around her is so hostile, they literally all act like they want to murder her, and so I don't love feeling like it's one girl, one character against an entire kingdom of people because she doesn't really even have a good support system or anything. So it's just really stressful to read and the romance aspect is not even there. Like truly, it's nothing. Like I'm 200 pages in and I haven't gotten even a whiff of romance at this point. So there's nothing really keeping me from DNFing this book. 
I was gonna try to push through and finish the book regardless because I really hate DNFing books, but I just can't muster the will to actually finish this book. I don't think it's gonna get any more interesting. So yeah, I think I'm gonna DNF it. I'm literally at 50%. It's a bit of a bummer to have my first DNF happen in January, but first DNF of this year, The Winter Duke. Hello guys, so it's the next day and I've had some time to process my disappointment from yesterday's read and I was thinking about it and I've actually really 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 been wanting to reread one of my Sarah J Mass books for the last like month or so. I actually own all three of her fantasy book series so I have the A Court of Thorns and Roses series, I have A Throne of Glass, and I have Crescent City. So I've been thinking really really hard about which one I want to reread first because I did actually binge read every single one of her books when I first started reading back in August of last year so a lot of it is still very fresh in my mind but I absolutely love all of those stories so much so I've really been wanting to reread them but I've been also thinking is January too soon to reread them but also who gives a fuck because you know if I want to reread them then I'll reread them but here is where the dilemma lies I can't decide which one to read because Crescent City is my favorite book of all time so I definitely want to reread that book but I don't know if I am ready to read it right this moment I think I want to read that one maybe next month. I've been debating between Akatar or Throne of Glass and Akatar has been coming up a ton on my TikTok and Instagram lately so I've been feeling like maybe it's a sign to reread it but I'm so torn about that book series now because every time I think about the Akatar books I just think about how much I hate Nesta and Elaine. I'm sorry if you guys are Nesta or Elaine fans that you're not gonna find any love for them on this channel. I'm sorry to say I absolutely despise their characters and I could put up with them in the first book because I mean they are part of Feyre's backstory but the fact that they become such a prevalent part of the story later really really bothers me to no end to the point where when I'm thinking now about rereading that series that's actually one of the main things that's pushing me off from reading it like so i don't know i do want to read the series again but i know that if it comes to the parts with the two sisters in it i am definitely going to just like skim over it and so maybe i should give it more time before i jump back into that book series so obviously that leaves throne of glass as the front runner and I love Throne of Glass. I'm absolutely ready to dive back into the world again. But also, am I? Because those are seven long books. I think if I reread them this time, I probably won't read Assassin's Blade, which is the prequel. But regardless, seven books, seven long books is a lot to jump into. And I kind of just want to get to the part where like things really start rolling and getting interesting, which is like the fourth book on. But also at the same time, I know that I don't actually want to start my reread by jumping that far into the book series. So I'm gonna have to start from book one. <sighs> So yeah, basically what I'm saying is I think I'm going to start rereading the Throne of Glass series and I just have to mentally prepare myself for this because there's a lot of emotional anguish that goes into reading this series and I think it's going to be a little bit better this time because I've already read it. I know everything that's going to happen but also so much happens in the book series that I'm sure there's things I'm going to forget about but I feel like I just need these characters back in my life. I need Aelin and Rowan and Lysandra and Adian and every single one of these characters. I need them back in my life. I just... I love them so much. Now the exciting part for me with this is that the first time when I read these I didn't have a book journal at the time so I didn't bother annotating or doing any of that kind of stuff and one of my favorite parts about reading books now is tabbing my favorite quotes and writing them down in my book journal with my thoughts and things like that and so the fact that I can do that now with my all-time favorite book series is just so exciting for me. So I think it's been decided. I think I want to start the first book in Throne of Glass own class. <laughs> but before we get into that, I actually need to vacuum this house because we are not good about vacuuming and I have long hair and my dog shed so it's just not a great combination when you want to keep a nice looking place. So I'm gonna do that first and then when I'm all good and ready, I'm gonna climb into this bed and get to reading.
Okay, so we're back home now and I was supposed to read when I got back, but I ended up spending the last hour just watching YouTube videos. But now I'm finally ready to read. So I'm gonna pick up Throne of Glass. Um, I don't know if you guys can see. But for my Throne of Glass books, I actually keep them here without the covers on because I think these covers are some of the most atrocious covers I have ever seen for books. They are so hideous. So as soon as I got them, I knew that I wasn't gonna display them with the covers on. But it does make it easy to grab, obviously, because I have them just in order anyway. So we're gonna grab Throne of Glass and get started. You know what else is really weird about these books is why only two of them have gold lettering versus the rest of them are all silver like who approved that decision why how does that make any sense i don't even understand but okay anyway <laughs> getting to the reading oh my god i am literally so excited to reread this book and to actually be able to annotate them this time with my notes and everything and oh oh my gosh i don't think you guys understand i've been wanting to reread them since i read them the first time all right so let's get into it I'm sorry, I know it's only been like a few pages since I started reading. I'm literally on chapter three, but I cannot get over this first interaction with Selena, Dorian, and Kale. Oh my god, I always want to say Chow because that's how it's like spelled, but it's Kale. K all. Mm, never gonna get that right, I swear to god. But anyway, the three of them meeting for the first time and her impressions of them and everything. It is so much better reading these around the second time, knowing like their relationships and stuff in the future and what happens. I don't know, that might be a good or bad thing for you guys, but for me, I love it because it kind of puts me at ease knowing what's gonna happen. So yes, very happy right now. <laughs> Okay, so it's been a few hours and I'm at page 151, just starting chapter 21. I can't believe I'm already almost halfway through this book. I know that each of the books gets longer, obviously, but this book is only like 400 pages and I'm so sad to say I'm already halfway. I'm enjoying rereading this so, so much. Surprisingly, I haven't had many moments to tab yet. I thought that I would, but there hasn't been anything really sticking out to me a ton yet. I'm hoping there'll be more towards the end, so I don't know, we'll see. But um, right now it's like almost six o'clock, so I'm gonna go help with dinner. We're doing homemade pizza tonight, so that'll be exciting because then I can just pile on mounds and mounds of cheese. So, all right, I will go do that. And then I'll probably keep reading later tonight. Either that or we might watch a movie, I'm not sure. I'll let you guys know. Hello friends and happy Monday. It's been a few days since I've updated you guys and I am just about to record my art print collection video for the week and I have yet to open this giant thing that I got this weekend. Um, it was the last piece that I was waiting for before filming this video so I'm super happy that it came in time and because it's actually related to Throne of Glass I thought it would be fun to open it with you guys just before I start recording. So... Oh, that was unsatisfying. Come on, don't fail me. <laughs> now, like I said in my last vlog video, I normally only buy the postcard sizes because um, they're easy to store and stuff. But this particular print, I knew that if I got in a postcard, it was gonna be way too small to see any of the detail. So I bought what I thought was the next size up and I may have made a slight calculation error because it's a lot bigger than I thought. I mean, this thing alone is just like massive. So when I saw it in the mail, I was like, oh my God, I didn't realize it was gonna be this huge. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. This is also really intimidating. The cardboard that it's covered in is huge, but the actual print itself is not that big, which I am so glad about. Oh my God, it's so pretty. Oh my god, it's so, so pretty. Okay, so I recently saw this. It's 
the cadre from Throne of Glass. Oh my God, I'm dying. I'm so happy that I have it now. Also quickly, I wanted to update you guys on like my weekend and stuff because I did in fact finish Throne of Glass. Um, I don't typically like to read on the weekends, but I kind of ran out of things to do. Like I try not to read on the weekends because I do that pretty much every day normally. So it's kind of like a break from that, but there wasn't that much to do this weekend, honestly. I only had like 150 pages left anyway, so it was like a quick read and I finished it last night and I was so happy to be able to actually journal about it. I am super, super happy to say that I actually think I enjoyed it more this time than the first time around, which may sound odd, but the first time I gave it a four and this time I gave it a four and a half because I just love this book so, so much. I found that I was able to enjoy more of like the nuances and the little details of what was going on and each of the characters' personalities because I wasn't so worried and caught up with what could happen. I was a little bit worried initially. Like I thought that maybe it wasn't gonna be as good the second time around or that it wasn't as good as I built it up in my head. I'm pleased to say so far, just with the first book, I can only say with the first book, but it's surpassing my expectations for a reread. So yes, very, very excited that I finished this book and I'm so excited to get into the next one. Also this weekend it was so beautifully rainy, mostly on Saturday, but I thrive when it's raining. It's also a great excuse for us to be able to break out Archie's raincoat, which is like literally I think it's my favorite thing that he has to wear. <laughs> like if I could make him wear his raincoat every day I would. Um, I also watched the first Lord of the Rings movie for the very first time ever um, on Saturday as well. It was enjoyable. I had fun. I gave it like a three and a half. Okay, so now I need to get into recording this video and then I will um, come back and hang out with you guys. <laughs> I will obviously be reading the second book in the Throne of Glass series. I remember enjoying Crown of Midnight less than the first one, not significantly less, just like not as much. Um, so we'll see if my feelings and thoughts change about it, but yeah. Anyway, I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, so I just finished that video and I'm trying to take a flat lay of my prints to use as like a background um, for the thumbnail and it's not coming out super well. Here's what it looks like. Looking at this print is making me so excited to keep reading Throne of Glass. So it's like noon now, so we're gonna eat lunch. And then after that, I'm gonna have to reorganize all of my prints back to where they belong. And then we will get to reading the second book in the Throne of Glass series. is so oily right now i literally can't deal with it please do not look do not judge me oily face gang normally i would try to powder before recording but i'm literally about to take it all off so i felt like there was no point so please excuse this hot mess so it's about six o'clock so we're gonna start making dinner we're doing a delicious shrimp scampi tonight so i'm very excited about that so I figured I would just wrap up where I left off. Um, I didn't even make it to halfway. I just kept getting distracted while I was reading. Normally when I'm reading books, I don't touch my phone like at all, but for some reason, I don't know if it's the book or the mood I'm in, I just couldn't focus. So yeah, um, I didn't get that far. I'm only on page 138. Um, I'll probably read more tonight. So far I'm enjoying the story. It's definitely a little bit slow to start. I feel like Crown of Midnight is kind of like a tough one because I feel like I'm just itching to get to Era of Fire. I am struggling a little bit to enjoy it, but I'm trying not to at the same time speed through it because I don't want to, you know, just glaze over this book. But yeah, anyway, so I'm gonna stop off here and then I will probably recap with you guys in another day or two. So yeah, I'll see you guys then.
Hi guys, so it's been a few days since I've updated you and that's because yesterday I didn't do anything really fun. I literally just sat on the computer and captioned my last video all day long and then I read like 100 pages of Crown of Midnight. Um, I kind of wish I filmed that only because I was struggling to get through the first like 200 pages of the book but once I hit that like 200 page mark like everything popped off. Like, of course, I ended up reading the most interesting part of the entire book when I wasn't recording. So yeah, anyway, I saved the last hundred or so pages of the book to read with you guys today because I'm going to finish off the vlog today. I'm really excited to be done with this book and to move on to Era Fire and Empire of Storms. Not me completely forgetting that Queen of Shadows exists because one of my favorite like relationships in this entire book series is actually Elodie and Lorcan. And by the way, I'm only going to say this once. I know that it's Elide. I know that that's technically how you pronounce it, but I actually read the entire book series the first time thinking in my head it was Elodie. It won't stick in my head. I literally cannot call her anything but Elodie. So I'm sorry if that's wrong and that like annoys you guys, but I'm going to keep talking about her and I'm going to keep calling her Elodie. So this is the only time I'm going to bring it up. But basically her and Lorcan's relationship is literally one of my favorite aspects of these books. I'm not gonna lie, that was one of the main things that got me through reading Crown of Midnight, those first 200 pages, is I was just like, I need to get through this book, and then I need to get through Error Fire, and then I will finally be introduced to the love of my life, my sweet baby angel queen, Elodie. Also, there have been a few developments over the last two days that I wanted to share with you guys. Basically, on Tuesday night or something, I got an email from, I think, Goodreads or something that said like, oh, these are new books that are coming out this next month by authors that you've shelved. So authors that I've read or that are on my TBR. And I was just like curious, so I checked out. One of them was um, A Court of Something Something, basically. The um, first book that Sarah J Mass is writing for Nesta and Cassian. And I was like literally shocked by that because I knew that that book was coming out this year, but I had no idea that it was coming out literally in February in like a few weeks. And I have been really, really torn about if I want to buy this book and start this series. I kept flip-flopping on it because I did enjoy Akatar, but I really, really, really hate Nesta. Like, truly, she is one of the worst characters I have ever read. Not to say she's, like, badly developed, but, like, as a person, she is one of the worst people I have ever read. Like, I don't think there's anything redeeming about her, and, you know, I know that people who are fans of her are obviously gonna say like she hasn't had a redemption arc yet and I'm like yeah I know that's the point of these next books is to have her be redeemed in our eyes but I don't care enough about her to want to read these books and I adore Cassian but like I've always thought that he was too good for her and I just like I don't know. So anyway, all of that is to say that I think I have ultimately decided that I am not going to pick up this book. Not yet. I'm not going to say that I'm never going to read the series. Maybe, you know, a few months down the line or next year when maybe the second book comes out or whatever, I'll be more inclined to read it. But as of right now, I have to say I have 0% interest in reading it and I don't even want to hear people talk about it, to be honest. That's how put off I am by this series. And especially after A Court of Frost and Starlight, that little novella that they had. I am even less inclined to continue this series or whatever it is. The other bit of news that I came across was that the Shadow and Bone series that's coming to Netflix has an official release date for April 23rd and literally when I heard that news it was all over TikTok literally like every other video that I was looking at on TikTok was about the Shadow and Bone um, show that's coming out and I was I was so happy. I was not mad about it at all. And now I know that I have literally up until April to read the Grisha trilogy. I'm glad that I have a timeline and I'm glad that I have enough time in that frame to actually read all of these books. Currently, I have been in the process of, you know, buying all of the books in the Lunar Chronicle series because I wanted to read that first. It's been on my TBR for, I think, way longer than Shadow and Bone has. But knowing that this show is coming out in April and that I have that deadline, I'm just like, gotta get on that first. I'm sorry, Lunar Chronicles, you're gonna have to be put in the back seat for now. And yeah, I'm super, super stoked. Anyway, I'm gonna get into reading this book. It's really early in the day. It's actually way earlier than I usually record. And that's because I have been dying to finish this book. You guys have no idea how tempted I was to finish this book yesterday, but I was like, I need to finish off this vlog. And I want to record my reactions to what happens at the end of this book, because I vaguely remember some things that happen again, as I've said before, but I don't remember everything. And Oh my god, I didn't even tell you guys. So yes, last night I did read, you know, the main part of like the action of this book and literally 
I cried. I did not expect to cry. Like everything that happened after the warehouse scene, if you guys know what I'm talking about, um, I was devastated. What happened to that one character literally broke me. And like the way that Selena was dealing with it and all of the ways that she was remembering um, this person that was in her life and is now not there, I was literally like, I am so devastated right now. Like I knew that it was gonna be sad and I could feel the tears welling up as things were happening. But literally anytime it was from um, Selena's POV and she was talking about how she couldn't grasp the fact that that person was suddenly not in her life anymore, I broke down. I cried for so long and I'm so happy that I did because that means that this book actually gave me something. Like it wasn't just boring exposition for 200 pages. Like it was worth it because that scene moved me and it was for something. So yeah. Okay, no more dilly-dallying. I'm gonna get right into reading and then we're gonna finish off this vlog. <laughs> I am at like the last 50 pages of this book and I just read the scene with Dorian and Selena in the library and you know the thing with the beast and literally I just need to take a moment to breathe after that because that scene got crazy and now I remember what happens afterwards and I know that it doesn't slow down after this it just keeps going so yeah I just felt the need to touch back with you guys because literally that shit was crazy So I just finished my reread of Crown of Midnight and I don't know what to say about this book. I mean, I think I can probably say with certainty that it's the most boring <laughs> and that's not to say the entire book is boring and that stuff that happened wasn't important. Like there is a lot of important stuff and like developments that are happening in this book that's important to us as the readers to set the ground obviously for the rest of the series. But for the most part, it's pretty boring. So I still enjoyed it. I think I'm gonna give it a similar rating to what I gave it the first time I read it um, because I don't think my thoughts and feelings have changed about it at all. I'm not gonna lie, it did kind of feel like I was dragging through it in the beginning. Like I said, the first 200 pages were definitely a little bit rough to get through. Um, but once I got past that kind of slumpy beginning, it was just all systems go. It was such an easy read. Yeah, honestly, I don't have too much to say about this book because I mean, I don't know. It was good. It was fine. I think I've decided that I'm going to wait until Monday to start Air of Fire so I can start it with you guys in the new reading vlog. So yes, I'm very excited for that. I hope you guys are as well. So this is officially the end of this reading vlog. So thank you guys so much for watching if you did and I will see you guys next time. Bye.